we can say that we're fiscally responsible, which, yeah, we are, but we're dealing with other people's money. It's not our money. When we deal with other people's money, there's a different definition for fiscal responsibility. And doubling our fund balance over the last eight years, I think, is not being fiscally responsible to our residents because we've overtaxed our residents by over $6 million over the last eight years. And we're going to add another million dollars to our fund balance again next year, which to me, that's another tax increase. So coming in with a zero tax rate change is a tax increase. And I don't think that's a fair way to tax our residents. Well, interestingly, over the past several years, at least since I've been here, uh, our auditors every year have said that we ought to raise the tax rate <clears throat> by a certain amount, whether it be a half a percent or one percent. <clears throat> I believe that the auditors this year, this year sort of uh, uh, echoed that, and the uh, the financial people in the township felt that, struck that way also. Uh, Jeff and I felt that we'd like to come in flat. We had the approbation of uh, two of our three other committee people, and it seems like a very fair and reasonable economic thing to do because one never knows what goes on in this world financially, economically. Look what the Fed did to us in uh, October, November, December by jacking up uh, the federal funds rate. So you've got to be very, very cautious when it comes to money. Peter, with all due respect to our, our professionals that are here today and the ones that served in the past, um, they are not budget experts, they're auditors. So they audit the books. They're not here to tell us how to prepare our budgets for our residents. We get elected to do that. And that's what we're sitting up here to do. They can make their recommendation, but again, they're not budget experts. They're experts at audience. Well, I, I, I disagree slightly with you because they have been doing this for many, many, many years for different towns, and you become an expert by doing something over a period of time. I, I'm also an auditor, and I will never say that I'm an expert at doing things that I have you know, for people that I audit. I, I am good at auditing, right? and that's what they're hired to do. They're not hired to tell us how to prepare our budget. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Mayor, if I could just, and not, not to create any controversy here, but just for the record, um, I myself have been the budget consultant to the Essex County Board of Children Freeholders for 31 years. Um, that means I conduct the budget hearings at the County of Essex. I'm instrumental in, in um, uh, meeting with department heads and making sure that uh, the budget comes in on budget. I, I look at it on a regular basis. For 15 years, I was a budget consultant in the city of Orange. Uh, it's an urban area, it has a lot of problems, and it presented a lot of challenges. For eight years, I was a budget consultant for the city of East Orange. That's a massive budget down there. So, I just want to make the record straight that my expertise lies in both areas. And, and I, I, I thank you for clearing that up, but we didn't hire you to consult us on the budget, we hired you to prepare an audit. I do think, so I, it says and, I, and the, other, the other thing, and I, I, I know I, I many, many, many years when I was the mayor of Roseland, I brought him in because he is the best at what he does. Right. And uh, he will tell you that I had the same philosophy back then for 14 years, but even prior to him coming and preparing budgets. And when I left there in 2010, I think Roseland was in great financial shape, even with tax decreases and paying off our debts and having surpluses where they were supposed to be. And I think the, the members here believe that I want to use more surplus in, in lowering the taxes. The budget that I presented at budget hearing meetings and our last meeting, I did not add any more money to this, utilize any more money from surpluses in order to lower taxes. We can leave that the same, just more accurately reflect the ins and the outs of the budget, and we can lower taxes and save residents money. I'm not touching surplus at all. And we're still gonna replenish the surplus next year. Yeah. But if you lower the, I mean, you're talking about the reserve for uncollected taxes. No, that's, see, that, no. There's a, there's a whole bunch of things in the budget that I, that I mentioned last meeting, and I mentioned that at my committee uh, budget meetings that, um, we could lower, I, at the beginning I said half a point. Right now I'm at the full points. $200 savings per average household does not handcuff our town, does not uh, 
utilize any more surplus, it's not increased debt, and we can save people $200. But that's, but that's, a, one, that's a one time thing. And no, then you, not, you I can lose. Do it next year, I can do it the year after, and I can do it the year and then, after. And then you're left with no surplus I'm, at the end of I'm the not day. Util, not utilizing any more surplus than you did. There, it won't be there to flow over to the following year. Yeah. So we'll still have $12 million in surplus. Where's the money going to come from? It doesn't just, we're just appear. Not, we're just not increasing surplus anymore. Yeah. And then what do you have to roll over? The same that you have now. It's not going to be the same. It will be. Because the way our budget is right now, you're going to increase more than a million dollars next year. So my budget will not increase it by that extra million. It will increase it by six million. Mm -hmm. I think, your, uh, I think your, uh, your thought process is very precise and concise. Thing that I worry about mostly are the vagaries of what goes on in the, in the world, in the government, in municipal government. And I, I would stay at this juncture of saying that we should be as conservative as we possibly can in this budget. Okay. Thank you. Move on. Move on.